in the run, folks, from the law, you do not want our next guest hot on your heels. That's why it is terrible news for Brian Laundrie that John Walsh has set his sights on him. John, it's great to see you again. You had a show on Wednesday night on Investigation Discovery. It's In Pursuit with John Walsh. You covered this story, and lo and behold, as is per usual for John Walsh, the tips start pouring in. Tell me how it's going. How many and how good are they? I will. I'll tell you, Ashley, it was amazing, but I got to say one thing to all the viewers in that area. Swatting is against the law. It's dangerous. People get killed. Whoever called 911 to send the cops there because they heard a gunshot, they're going to trace your phone. They're going to go back to you and you're going to do some time. It's a horrible thing. No you're kidding, right? right? Terrible. So, Just terrible. Let me give you an update. We had at least three times more phone calls than we've had on any fugitive. This is the third season of In Pursuit. We've caught 26 wow. guys. We've recovered eight missing kids. So people are watching the show. It's amazing. Um, and many people said they saw you and I together for a couple nights and said, you know, I watched and I, I got off the couch and, and I'm looking at this list here. We got about 500 tips and from everywhere. People thought that they had spotted him in Portugal. You know, the world's a smaller place and I've caught the 1,422 guys I caught, they were, some of them I caught in different, the craziest places, 45 countries. So people hmm. texted us or called in from all over, Portugal, all over. People are talking about Cuba. But the, vet, the good tips, 15 tips we had was what I had said, that the dirty laundry, dirty laundry mom and dad and the Johnny Cochran lawyer that you talk about, Stephen Bertolino, who I hope is he knows he's going to burn in hell for hiding all this stuff and giving all kinds of red herring tips to the police. He's the mouthpiece. And I know about client privilege and Fifth Amendment. I've been doing this for a whole long time. But boy, he knows a lot that he's not talking about. But anyways, many of the tips were my theory that they somehow, you know, when he got home from the trip and he didn't say anything to anybody for 10 days, this is not, and I know your lawyers are nervous, this is John Walsh's opinion has been doing this and caught 1,422 of uncatchable guys that the cops could never catch. So I got a little bit of experience, but I, when they got, when he got home, they scrubbed the van, he and his family, the dirty laundries, and I'm sure the FBI didn't find anything in the house. And during that time, they planned how to get him out. So daddy bought a camper top, a little white camper top. It's still in the driveway. And the neighbors who really only said it the other day, I was waiting in line in, on Fox News to talk to Martha McCallum. And the neighbors walk out and say, you know, we were so surprised that, you know, about three days before Gabby's parents filed the missing persons report, three or four days, they didn't remember how when it was exactly, that the Brian and the father put the camper top on the red pickup truck, pa packed. And off they went. Uh, and, and, yeah, and they were, off, they, they off they went, strangely enough, on September 11th, the day that, you know, Gabby was reported missing. John, let me ask you something real interesting about a development today. Brian Enton just reported that this woman drove 60 miles to the laundry house. She doesn't know them. She didn't know Brian. She didn't know Gabby. But she came to knock that stake with those pictures of Gabby saying, I once lived here. And I think what's so critical about this, how this ties to you, is that these are people who care. They're the people who pick up the phone and they call you. They're the people who check their ring cameras. They're the people who check their drive cameras. And are you getting people like that who just feel an emotional connection to the story? Huge. We haven't had this much attention since Elizabeth Smart. And when the FBI wow. gave up and told the Smarts that she was dead in the desert and they should have a memorial, I never gave up. I profiled her 17 times and a couple in Sandy, Utah spotted her with the description I gave of the guy that took her. But it is people, so I, I wanna finish about the leads. I believe that when they took, get left off in the pickup truck, they went Northwest over the panhandle of Florida. And then Steve Berlino gets in it on Tuesday and says he's out in the desert and there were, I mean, in the swamp and they're worried and they found his car. How did they find his car in a 60,000 acre swamp? And we left a message, Brian, if you're killing yourself or thinking about it and you're hurt. And then they said, oh, and we went back on Thursday and we got the car. And then Bertolino didn't call the Friday. So I think they bought this guy nine days. He had a big head start. So I say now with all the chaos at the border, I caught 45 guys in Mexico. 
they drove them north over the panhandle, wherever they, you know, a little trip across Louisiana and Alabama first, then Louisiana, with all the chaos on the border, border he could have walked with a monkey suit on across. You can walk into Mexico. There are no, no uh, border patrol, of Mex Mexican border patrol or customs or anything like that in most of the border. So we got a lot of tips. We got 15 tips that people had spotted him. And then that picture shows up in Mexico at a restaurant. We're pretty sure that's not him. But I, I believe he was, you know, after after the camper trip, he was never there. And Bertolino kept feeding yeah. the cops bullshit like he did today about the wallet and all the crap. So well, let, let me, me tell you. Let me okay, just quickly, I got to fit in a break, though. I got to fit in a break. Um, okay, just wrap this one up and I'll fit in a break. And I want to ask you about Bertolino, something new that's uh, arrived. Okay, I got a couple, I got a tip today from Freeport in the Bahamas. And a lady there believes she spotted him and she thinks that he, she said, there's never a white guy looked exactly like this guy walking in our neighborhood. You can take a ferry from Fort Lauderdale to the Bahamas and all you have to do is have your, vac you know, have, have a vaccine proof that you, did, you don't have COVID, show your passport and then you get on boats. Uh, the, the B used to be days guys used to go down to St. Thomas because American protectorate. So these lady in the Bahamas in Freeport says, I swear I saw him. And I thought, oh boy, if he got on a boat somewhere, they paid somebody off, then he's going to be hard to find. But the other great tips were Appalachian Trail. One of Gabby's friends called this afternoon and said, I don't know why the cops don't know this. I told him that he, that Brian brags about how he lived on the Appalachian Trail for three months wow. in a tent and out of his backpack. So we got 10 tips from the Appalachia Trail. It's northwestern corner, panhandle corner of Florida, possibly into Mexico, Appalachian Trail. And I hope he doesn't get on those, I got on a boat in Freeport somewhere. They paid somebody to take him to another island. I used to work in the Bahamas. I was a hotel builder. So we've got some well, wonderful- those are, those are fascinating, absolutely fascinating. Okay.